Okay. Um, yes. Um, hi, I'm Sartan. I'm talking about interval office office collaboration. Um, by the way, um, I had a similar talk last year, which is uh, which I finished after the talk. So there are about 80 slides, very much in detail um, about Tirana. I put this later on in the in the, in the references, so um, you might read it even much better in detail. But uh, um, what I'm talking about is that what bothers me about 20 years ago. I worked for Sun Microsystem, started in 1999 on a web office, and we failed with a dot com ball, and we started again, and we failed again, Oracle dismissed us all. And um, the thing what we did is, and I must say, as a server company, we transformed the ODF document on the server and sent it to a browser as HTML. Okay? So this is fine if you have strong servers and a small mobile, um, weak mobile. But and it works for editing, but it really sucks if you come together and um, um, try to, to, to work on a single document because you never know what the other has changed in HTML. It's very hard to find out afterwards. So at that point, um, I would find out that um, we need a better collaboration in, in the sense that uh, even a browser office can work with a LibreOffice, for instance. Okay? And that's what we're talking about. And uh, I think I've got a solution. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if it's possible. But let's let's simply start. First of all, let's let's agree on what we are talking about, okay? And um, from what I do, or what I what I discuss with other people, um, when people talk about collaboration, they have different things in mind. Some people are um, just using change tracking. Um, some others people using, let's say, uh, Collabora Online or Google Docs, and some other uh, working on software, right? And so that we can put it in two parts, I think. Uh, one thing is the real-time collaboration, the real-time mode. It's in the wiki, um, the link is coming. But the real-time mode is um, there are multiple courses at the same time, and you see the others. You, uh, you cannot go offline, it's usually not offline, so like or online, and like um, usually uh, Google Docs. Um, the benefit of this is um, there are no virtual things. And, um, and the other thing is the non real mode, where you can go with your, usually it's only in source code, but you go on the weekend, you work on the weekend, you work on the train, you work offline, and later on you need to merge somehow, and you have to pull from the other server and, um, and merge and push back. So that's the, um, the non real time mode. And, um, um, let's see. So, as I said, they're separated by um, what I said in the real time in the, the similar vision console systems and ether packs and so on. But I think the non real time mode has many more advantages, it's like, um, uh, like working on branch and have all the key advantages. So, but in the end, we all need to come in to have all the copies actually the same. We have to sync somehow. And in the real time mode, there's an automatic fix. Right? So if somebody is inserting it and uh, others are deleting at the same point, it will automatically be, um, that's uh, what will be fixed. That's what Google Docs does, does, and that's what, for instance, other HTML editors like CK editor pipelines. And you know, as a software developer, you really need to um, solve the version of place manually. Okay. So, how does it work? And I think. Um, this is the only point I didn't have in history where all the developers fully agree instantly. Usually you come up with, with ideas and problems and all have, you have 10 developers and at least 10 different opinions, yes? But here we all agree that if you want to collaborate with others, you do not send the full documents around because otherwise it does not scale. If it's a large document, um, it gets slower and slower. With, for instance, what I mean is with every typing of your editor, you send the full document. Um, it doesn't work out. So um, we all agree that we have to send something, right? And um, and then then it starts. Um, usually it starts. They press just keys and they just patch the key events. But um, when you think about the title of this talk, where we talk about interoperable, meaning um, we want to work with other applications and uh, connect with other applications, then we need to have a common agreement what we are sending. Okay. So, um, and here it comes. We, we need to agree on, um, on a common base. And it's certainly not um, any keystrokes. 
And it's usually, we only have ODF here, we have to clear an ODF, but it doesn't matter, to, it doesn't turn out, uh, turn out to, to send XML because it's um, sometimes it's zipped, it's another way of over there, and sometimes it's one line, and there's a lot of noise in there. So what we have to do is we have to go to a higher level to, to dispatch semantics changes. Okay, and now another point. Um, I was asking a developer, I've discussed a lot of times, I asked him, hey, what shall we do? It's what we need to get it in instead of that. A time machine would appropriate. So, um, when, I, when I thought about today, what would be the best benefit to get out of the talk is, hey, I would some developers say, yeah, that's a good idea, we have to do it, and we have to get this into the LibreOffice. Um, reality is, I talked to many, many developers um, during the parties, during um, connections, during um, other conferences, and the problem is, um, the burden is so high. Um, to, to get this going, that it's very, very unlikely that it's, we're going to, uh, to work with LibreOffice. So, um, just to get you at the bottom. Nevertheless, um, I'm working um, on the ODF toolkit, which is not part of the GDF, and there you will see some of the parts I implemented. And why are we in this mess? The problem is that staff, as why we do this time machine, we might say, because um, that um, my colleagues told me two years ago, um, I talked about the change, said, that's a great idea, why didn't you tell me it ten years ago or something, right? And uh, same thing, staff comes from the 18th, and uh, star office is the answer to open office, the answer to the office. So um, the design was not made for the current real time collaboration um, requests. When we, at that time, we had a single computer personal disk. This floppy disk is sometimes an modem, which was started on, on, on the internet. So we have a single document that we uh, moved around. And nowadays, we all have a smartphone, we have at least a laptop, and we are collaborating with ourselves. We have a single document that we are um, editing in multiple machines. And um, unfortunately, with all the solutions that we have, like sending a mail instead of uh, sending a letter, or using Dropbox, we just, we're making the exchange of the full disk faster, and um, I have later again, but we are just like software developers that are zipping on source code repositories, and we are faster exchanging the zip, it doesn't help us. We need to somehow um, answer the key collaboration question, and because whenever we want to work on a single document, we have to ask the others, what have you changed to merge back the changes? It's, it's very simple, and I'm going to <laughs> repeat myself on that. So, what shall we do? We need to have a new change design because currently in the Oasis, in the XML, uh, we only define this zipped XML, right? And there's no way to um, to to define to exchange something in an interoperable way um, because we have nothing like this, right? And um, but the only thing we do have is the XML, and it what we know it has to look like something like this. We have three different applications. And then we have um, some defined change that's been dispatched, like LibreOffice saying the other, uh, oh God, I got a new second paragraph, and the other said, oh, I'm making the fourth paragraph um, blue. And then Google could change, or the mom could just take the two changes and merge them, instead of looking into the documents and finding out themselves by various things what has been changed, just taking the two changes and put them together. That is simple. So the good news is, um, it exists. Um, after Oracle dismissed us all, some of us went to uh, open exchange. Um, they belong to one and one, and I'm quite puzzled why one one is using Collabora Online, but uh, <laughs> that's another miracle. But they have an office suite that's based on changes, and I worked about two and a half years at freelance for them, and uh, created on the back end some, um, on a fork of OVM, 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 um some change mechanism. It's like a black box. You throw in a document, in a text document, and get out a, a list of changes. Let me quickly show you how, does it, how it looks like. So think about, we have this document here, and we get out that one. Can you somehow see? I can't. This is, um, we see code, which is really code. I'm not sure if you uh, can see it, but um, I try to show you a little bit. So there's every line, this is JSON, by the way, 
and every line is an operation, it's a change. And um, this should be an office document, which is horrible to view, <laughs> but it's simply just um, character attributes and uh, underline and a few styles. And um, with every uh, line, there's something like um, add style, add text, add paragraph, and um, a position where to place it. And if you can think about it just like um, a bunch of um, API calls that are being sent to an editor, and there it's, they are being applied to a document. Um, and similar like a git commit for server bells, uh, these operations have to be applied at a certain state of the document. Okay, they agree on a certain state of state of the document, like um, we are working on the on a collaboration officer or an editor, and then we go offline, but continue offline working. It's like we're working on a branch. It's very similar to Git branches concept. It's identical basically. And afterwards we have to come back. And I have some slides um, from the Tirana that it's uh, the same thing like a git pull request, you can do you ask the other uh, one first, hey, oh you try first try to push, then you realize oh there's other changes, and then you have to rebase and put this together. So, this is, um, I cleaned this up, I got found by a prototype fund with a German um, open source software for half a year, and um, it took me that long, to <laughs> But, it's, think about the black box. You get, have to get rid of this zipped source code repositories. You have to get into the realm of commits, of divs, right? And for this, we have this black box on the server. I'm, um, I'm going to uh, release a beta uh, this week, hopefully. There's some other smaller issues I'm going to fix. And another thing is, of course, to make it perfect, you can even push new changes of yourself to this black box and then be merged into this document, right? Otherwise, it would be lifeless. But still, it's only for developers. So. Um, the next thing is to, to get an editor connected to this. Um, hopefully LibreOffice, but um, we are still working on the time machine. Let's see, okay. Um, okay. This is the black box actually. And uh, just to, to mention, this is what I talked yesterday about in detail. And um, I will show you how it should look like, right? Because um, these are the implementation details. Nobody is interested in the XML because you want to be um, you want to be working with other people who are working on let's say Word or HTML, but they all have the same semantic concepts of paragraph and bold and uh, table and so on. So you you have to hide them from from all details of only the XML or the package. Okay, so this has to be private, but nevertheless they have a semantic API. Um, and usually that's what the user wants. He doesn't want to go to Office Body, Office Text, or uh, like to these implementation details which are just annoying. They just want open a text segment, insert a paragraph, insert a world, make world bold, right? And make world bold means like um, uh, from the 6 to the, I'm not sure, 12 paragraphs or something. Um, change to this. So, but I'm working there, and hopefully somebody jumps in. And the next goal would be and I applied the third time <laughs> to the prototype fund, but I haven't succeeded this year, so I'll try again next year to, um, to get exactly this going. I have my black box on the, uh, on the back center server, and I'm trying to get some editor working with this. So let me first explain why is Emacs here? <laughs> Emacs, you know Emacs? You know Emacs? Oh, not everybody is sleeping very good. <laughs> okay. Emacs is a text editor for those who have no, um, no raised their hands. And that means how does an ODF application, sorry, how does a Emacs become an ODF application? So in an ODF application, so an application is able to load this XML and save it and edit it. So the thing is, in the back end, we throw this, let's say, a very high sophisticated document like a specification into this black box. We get all these changes out, and then we only take the text and the paragraph changes out. Well, wait a minute. Emacs doesn't know any paragraphs, but we can emulate it by a line, okay? Every single line in Emacs while we are in the ODF mode is a paragraph. And then there's text, and there's nothing else we can add, yes? But that's sufficient if you want to just read or fix some typos, insert, that, um, insert delete some um, paragraph or text, 
That's sufficient. And the best thing of all, remember, we are no longer the flock in this area. We now merge our change into the existing document. Because when we have the change from the editor, Emacs, we would just put it back to the back end. And before that, we will put the unknown features back into it, right? Because remember, we, we will draw it out and we merge it back in. So by this, you are able to add it with Emacs in all the other document without destroying it, okay? Remember, LibreOffice, for instance, it's loading everything in the model. If there's anything in the XML that LibreOffice is not aware of, it's lost. Sorry, no bonus. If it's either you got the model or not. And if you have a very huge document, you press save, it takes ages to download to save, right? That's quite common because everything has to be uh, loaded back with this. That's totally unnecessary. That's eighty. Yes. We, we, we can track all the changes and uh, merge them. That's what we, we should want to do. Okay. So, what I did since Tokyo is I did a little small test, right? Because the CKN5, you can, what's well, here, you can clone it, install it, build it, and then go to some sample file and put a few lines into it. Um, I've been to Warsaw, the guys coming from Poland, with a bus, I'm from Berlin, and um, sit together a, a, a day, and um, they gave me some details on what events I have to listen. And the thing is, Seeker Edit 5, the first version, is a, they switched the domain, uh, sorry, the model, from this full document to a change space document. And when I read it, I thought, Cool. How about instead of taking emacs, which only knows text and paragraphs, why not taking something that is really embedded in HTML and um, where I can load a full document and that's even viewable with tables and lists and so on? So, um, what I did is let me show you. Okay, because I, I go here on my virtual box. This is the CK editor. Can you see? The, the, there's a home page on that. So, if you open the sample MPI, then the sample index, you, without the other, I'm a real sample over there, um, you see, uh, you can instantly add it there, right? I make an X, and I can open it to font. And here I have my slides, or I assume my slides, I have my yesterday slides, is um, just one line, the event is not to apply operation. The apply operation, whenever you type something, it's being, it's being called. And um, the idea is to, to gather all the changes, right? You have to be aware, um, if you want to merge this document, what the user did. So, if I press now F12 of the console, then you see there's my X, and I do some more complex... We trust you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you will not see much, but I, what I did is, I knew you would trust me. I said, I pasted them. So there's a little boilerplate and things I do not understand if it's necessary, but um, the goal is to translate those changes to the changes to the changes of the black box I have worked so many years on, and that's uh, now the TF property. So, uh, you see, I inserted the X at the position 0, that's a paragraph. They count with 0, what I think is a mistake. Human, uh, the API that is human readable so should be as close to human thinking as possible. So, when you say, when you want to point to the first, you should write 1 and not 0, right? And uh, XML, by the way, is do, doing this, and I'm doing this in JSON as well. And, um, but you can increment it, it doesn't matter, right? But it said the, the X is now in the first paragraph and the second position, and then there is some attribute operation, it's called format in, in our language, and it's starting in the first paragraph from the fourth to the eighth uh, character and it's making a type. Quite simple, okay? So the next step is to write a plugin, get all the things, um, and send it to, to the backend, to a server, maybe a class function or something. And in return, if you load a document, push it into this to the browser, right? And then um, there are other things possible, like um, um, who knows Git? 
Uh, <laughs> okay. So git, uh, git hacks. So you you can currently if you check in an old team and another version of it, then they make a diff, you see some binary, right? This is nonsense. Okay. But what you can do is you can override it and put into um, put with a hook whenever you um, add um, an ODT, you would call this backend black box. And what you would do in there, you would do the um, put in the list of changes, right? So when there's another ODT coming in, you put the other list of changes in, and the diff would be the diff between these changes, which is much easier. And best thing of all, the diff of these changes is a small set of changes with applied to one of them creates the other, right? It's ideal, okay? So um, that's possible. Um, other things very easy are if you expect only the text, right? You can translate it like with machine reading, um, Google, Facebook, and like that, and other open source there. And the best thing, you know exactly where the text was. You can translate it, just delete the existing tag and put the other back, right? And still keep the formatation. You with me? Okay. Anyway. So there are a lot of scenarios coming up. Uh, when we go this way, and uh, and um, so I think it's it's worth to go there. Although I'm not sure if LibreOffice is able to follow us with our time machine. I'm not sure how this, how this works out. But um, I talked with Paul and he said if people are interested, like uh, people who donate in money, um, then everything is possible. And people are only interested when somebody else shows you, look, this is possible. Right, so my idea is I start with CK Edit, show people that, and that's oh yeah, I want to have LibreOffice as well. So that's my hopeful uh, approach here. Um, <coughs> bring the only changes to OLX application. Why should we bring these changes to simplification? Because I want to have interoperability. I don't want to have a login with this black box, only existing at TDF. <coughs> Sorry. And um, I want to have certain kind of openness. So, the Oasis specification, specification is like a cook cook, cook recipe of the old blueprint, meaning um, it's, um, we put this idea into one place where everybody can gather it and that it, um, it can be uh, used by everyone for free. So um, what we do not have is we do not know what a table is. We do not know what a, uh, we have a lot of XML there, right? But we don't have semantic groupings. We just say, oh, this is the XML tree, we have this grammar, but we do not have defined on image this, right? And um, most of all, the next step, what can we do? Uh, what are the usual things that the user is adding, deleting, and modifying? What I said, these semantic entities called like a table, table row, ten cell, so whatever, yes, text format. And somehow, um, we have to do it in a more clever way. It, nobody can do it manually and go through all these 1,200 1, attributes, 600 elements. It's crazy. So I think about, um, about I wondered about domain specific languages. Yes? It's like domain specific, domain -specific languages. It's like SQL. It's, it's a language invented for a certain, certain idea, right? So um, we have to go there with automation. We have to be there with. Um, with a lot of, um, I would say, hopefully cleverness, that we can get rid of that. Okay, fine, that's, that's good. So, um, i do this quickly here now, because um, it's just an idea, and I'm actually working on this. This is a part of the ODS certification. And currently, um, we have this in, <laughs> yes, it's real less. It's in um, 18,000 lines of code. There's a very huge text file, right? And this defines what a table is, and what optional um, target elements get. But it's very hard to read, not only here, but if you have this 18,000 lines of, so <coughs> of, sorry, of um, text open, and somebody asks you, oh, by the way, can a paragraph be nested somehow? You have to search and find in this document, which is crazy, okay? So, um, inspired by some video, I have to get a link here, of. Um, Chaos Computer Congress of Bug Hunting by Graph Databases and Linux Kernel, I put this thing into a graph database, right? Because um, you know, this is just a star. <laughs> the red are the attributes, and it's just in the middle the table element with um, with the table shriveled in a little boilerplate, 
But this is a first step to the visualization. And if a graph database, you can just traverse the tree. You can ask the graph with a like. Uh, you can graph, ask the graph with a routine. Please traverse yourself and check yourself. Is there a text p somewhere beyond the text p? Right. So you have this question put into an automation. And okay, zoom in here on the text. And this is an implementation implementation detail of this. We call this multi-schema validator because we don't. I don't want to read a uh, writer. Uh, Write program uh, reader of grammars myself. I reused reuse some open source software. It's called earlier the Sun Multi Schema Validator. Use can load um, DTD, um, Relax NG, what is uh, the grammar that we are using in the ODF, and WC uh, grammar. And, and I just found the internal model. But epsilon means it's nothing, and choice of epsilon means optional. So this is the same thing here, right? It should be. Um, it should be made easier. Okay, so long story short, it would be good to use more tools, better tooling, um, to get rid of this complexity. So, this is my final slide. So, first of all, this website of the ODF Proof is very interesting. These are the operations that are currently supported. And um, there's the source. Um, the changes are coming this week, hopefully. Um, and the specifications there. And the last thing is, um, I will talk for the rest of the time here. There's the next minute five minutes. Um, I, I wrote three pages because um, the ACM coming back to Berlin, I met them four, four years ago in, in Colorado to, to, to show them the idea. And um, I tried to summarize what I hate on this, all this current weather way of five minutes. And um, there's just three things. First, this change tracking should be embraced from the beginning of five months, right? What I said, we now do by reverse engineering, adding the semantic, adding the, as, uh, the changes, the API, right, to it. A semantic API should be there from the beginning, right? Second thing, it should, the specification, what I'm trying to do as well, should be machine readable. You should generate sources from it, right? And not writing, reading 600 pages to, to, to drain and generate some software which is basically like painting by numbers because everything, everything is, is fixed, right? Uh, it's not the user view, the jury, we, we, yes. And the last thing, of course, is layout. Uh, LaTeX is stable on all machines and we are, we are totally, um, yeah, how I was saying, we're losing up with stable layout. We're using PDF and ODF. <laughs> Which is crazy. Why not having a file format that by design have a stable layout like that, not tech, but has a, a much, mm, um, but have it embraced in the, in the specification, right? Because it's also only painted by numbers. So, three things on three pages the collaboration on the changes, which is an API, the layout, and the specification should be more modern. Okay, that's it. Any questions? Thank you. What does it mean, DOM? What? Oh, yeah, DOM. What does, what, what does the DOM stand for? Not DOM. Oh, wait. DOM. Oh, sorry, DOM. It's all right. And this is a document object model. It's, in, in, it's by DOM. It's just the um, HTML DOM. And DOM is just a, a way of an API. Like, um, ODF application has no runtime API, but browsers do it. Browsers, every browser has to support a DOM, which is like a timeless. Um, tree, yes, every HTML is written into the DOM, and JavaScript is working on the DOM. It's very simple, basic, but it works. We have a great interoperability, at least much greater interoperability in browsers than we have in, in, in office applications, right? Every macro, which is similar to JavaScript, is totally um, proprietary, okay? J macros and JavaScript is uh, very like the same thing. Okay, good question. Thank you. Yes? Do you know? Um several recent uh, artifacts from the Eclipse project uh, for uh, making collaboration and this with model, etc. Are you aware? Uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. Try again. <laughs> <laughs> no, my English is not. Do, do you know the Eclipse project, right? The Eclipse project. Eclipse. 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 Yes, of course. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, mm, they have uh, some more or less recent artifacts to manage models and differentials uh, and gives uh, between models and um, helping to collaboration. 
Okay, so you ask me if I don't clip because they have a different mechanism based with coloration, right? And the thing is, um, I know a few tools on that, but they all work on the syntax level, okay? And the, um, the trick that we are doing here is to get away from the syntax because I didn't show this. Or so no, 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 I know. Okay. It's, it's nothing related really with syntax. If, if you don't know, I, I'll okay, show you. Show me. Five minutes, I can yeah, 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 thanks. I'm happy, I'm happy to, to hear that. It's beautiful. I put it in the slides. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It's okay, amazing. I will see. <laughs> any, any further questions? Otherwise, 